Hello again everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing and assembling the RAS pad. In fact, I have it right here. I have actually come from the future from a time after I've actually assembled this and unboxed it to show you what the final product looks like right now. Well, actually, I just record each segment in a completely different order than what you end up seeing it in when I do the final render of a video. But anyway, I'm going to be unboxing the RAS pad. I'll show you how to put it together and I'll give you some initial thoughts at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so let's go ahead and get the unit out of the box. So I'll just go ahead and bring this up to the camera a bit. Fully check it out. Pretty cool. So here we have a user manual. Pretty neat too. And it's actually in color, which is pretty neat. And here we have the RASP pad itself. I'll show you that in a moment. So we have the power brick. It's pretty neat. It looks like all kinds of USB cables in this baggie here. Let's see what this is. So take a look at this. We have all kinds of various cables in the box. So all kinds of things here. Some angled cables as well. Really short USB-C cable. Then we have the power cable. That goes into the brick right here. A screwdriver, which is pretty cool. And I recognize most of these right here because these are Raspberry Pi parts. So I would expect to find something like this in the box. And then here we have the RASP pad itself. So it's a little on the thicker side, as you can see. So just give you a look at all the ports here. Each side of the tablet itself. Pretty cool. Can't wait to check this out. All right, so at this point, what I'm going to do is show you guys how to assemble the RAS pad. I have a Raspberry Pi. I have one right here that was just lying around. So I'm going to install this into the RAS pad right now. And here it is again. We're going to open it up and get everything set up. Inside the box was this little piece of foam right here. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to sit the unit on top of that pad. Make sure that nothing gets scratched. And they did include a screwdriver, so let's go ahead and open it up. And right here we have a sticker that's letting us know that we should remove the SD card before we try to take the cover off the unit. But since this is the very first time that I've ever set this up, there's no SD card in the unit right now. But if you ever need to disassemble this in the future, make sure you remove the SD card before you actually attempt to remove the cover. So let's go ahead and get this removed. There's a little indentation on this side right here. And there we go. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit. Make sure you guys are able to see this. We have two speakers right here. Just make sure you are very careful with these. You definitely don't want to puncture these speakers because obviously if you do puncture those speakers, then, well, they're not going to work. 
So here I have the Raspberry Pi. The heat sink that you see was already on it. So what I'm going to do is just put this on the chassis. I'm going to set it right here. I'm not going to fasten it down just yet. So right here we have an ethernet cable and we're going to use that to join the ethernet port of the Raspberry Pi to the ethernet port of the Raspad itself. So we're going to insert one end here on the Raspberry Pi. And then the other end, of course, here. There we go. And then pretty much the same thing here. This is a USB 3 cable. So what we're going to do is insert one of the ends here. And then the other end. Might have to pick up the Raspberry Pi to make this happen. We have two micro HDMI cables right here. And I'm going to attach these next. Now notice how one is larger than the other. And that's important, as you can see, they can't both be the same size and expect to fit. So now that I have that plugged in, we're going to insert that over here into the appropriate port. Okay, so everything should be nice and snug. And next we have the USB-C cable. So I think you are probably noticing a pattern by now. We're going to insert one end right here. Then the other end goes right here. Then we have an extension cable for the SD card here. So this is what we're going to install next. Going to insert one end into the Raspberry Pi. The same way you would an SD card if it were an SD card. It's a little tricky to get in there, but it's working. I'm going to pull up on the black plastic tab, and I'm going to push it back down, make sure that it's secure. And it seems good to me. And then next what we're going to do is secure the Raspberry Pi into the board, which is going to be a little tricky because this cable right here is very stiff. So you want to gently just kind of move it away a bit. You don't want to force it overly so. So now it's time to actually fasten the Raspberry Pi to the chassis. And to do that, I will use the included screws and screwdriver. And we also have some heat sinks right here that came with the unit as well. And installing these will definitely help with cooling. There we go. And we also have this little guy right here. And I understand that this is some sort of a shim that enables auto rotate. So we definitely want to make sure that we install this as well. And that should just be a matter of putting it over the GPIO pins and pushing it down gently. Just like that. So here we have the back cover. And what we're going to do right now is install the fan. And here's the fan. Now here's the logo side. This is actually going to go down this way, just like that. And we have a place for it right here. I'll try to center that better. Just going to place this down, just like that. And we have four screws that are dedicated for the purpose. These right here, I'll try to get that centered into the camera. We're going to use these to secure the fan to the case. And that's essentially it. We do need to connect this fan cable to the board, which is pretty easy to do. It's just right here, essentially. So, And that's it. So what we could do now is gently just lower this onto the back cover. Of 
kind of work it in there. And of course, the cables are going to make this a little challenging. They're a little stiff in there, but just gently press it down and it should be good. And then what we can do is turn it upside down and put it back on. So the next order of business is setting up the SD card. In the instructions, they recommend that you use Etcher, which is a very popular program for flashing SD cards, and it's okay, but I actually prefer USB Imager, which is what you see on the screen right now. And when I scroll down, you'll see that we have a version for pretty much every operating system you can think of. I'm currently using Pop! OS on my end, so I'm going to go with the Ubuntu version. If you have a different operating system, then obviously you'll choose something else. There's Windows, Mac OS, and various flavors of Linux here as well. So I'm just going to download this version right here. I'll open that up, get it installed. And now that part's taken care of. Next, what we can do is go to the download page for Raspad. I'll have all the links in the description down below. So we're just going to go to the download URL and I'm going to download the image right here. Save the file and I'll give this a moment to download and then I'll be right back. Okay, so we have the Raspad OS downloaded and ready to go. So now that that's done, I'm going to open up a file manager. I'll go into my downloads directory here, and I'm going to unzip the Raspad OS. I'll extract it right here. And right here, it's extracted. So we can open up USB Imager. and we'll select the extracted version. And then we'll select the SD card. I only have the one here. Just make sure that you are selecting the right one because this will wipe everything, I repeat everything, on that SD card. So it's gonna be completely wiped out. Go ahead and write it. And we'll give it a few minutes and then I'll be right back. And there we go. Everything should be good to go. So I'm going to insert the SD card into the RAS pad and get it powered on. So now everything is put together and what you are seeing on the screen right now is exactly what you would see on your end if you were to purchase this unit and start it up for the very first time. I have it hooked up to my screen recorder so that way you are able to see everything as I go through the process. So here we can actually choose our time zone. And although there's no scroll bar that you can see, you can actually still scroll. So I'm going to scroll down. And here's Detroit. That's going to be my selection for that. I'll select English. And according to this, the system needs to be rebooted in order to apply the settings. So I will go ahead and reboot it. All right, so it's fully started. And we can see on the screen right now that it's fully booted into Raspad OS. So what I'm going to do is spend some additional time getting accustomed to the Raspad in preparation for the review that I will have on my channel very shortly. So my initial impression of the Raspad is that this is quite possibly the heaviest tablet I have ever held in my hand. It's quite bulky. And as you could tell, it's quite thick, but that's to be expected considering that there's an actual Raspberry Pi in here. And let's be honest, Raspberry Pis are not thin. So um, that makes sense to me. Now, what I'm going to do now is work on the full review and I'll be back with the full review as soon as I have it done. I want to spend some time with the Raspad, just get a feel for it. I have some cool things that I'd like to try out on it. And once I do that, I will be back with a full review, so stay tuned. 
Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already done so, so that you'll be the first to see that review as soon as it's out. Thanks for watching.